praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Kevin Williams, Jr. And I'm First Lady Amara Burrell Williams. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we invite you to watch our sermons and Bible studies that it may uplift you. And please visit our website, gbwtalbion.org. And remember, we love, love you in, in Jesus' name. name. Praise the Lord, we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, we're not at Greater Bible Way Temple of Albion. We are at Sterling Books and Brew in downtown Albion, Michigan. Uh, we are second uh, part of this series. Uh, and we're dealing with God can help you. And this is part two. We have a few scriptures we're going to go over. And we want to be a blessing to you. Uh, today's days is very tough. It's very hard. We're living in the last and evil days. And from the coronavirus to the tornado that hit in Nashville, which I don't understand because Nashville's not really surrounded by a whole lot of bodies of water. Uh, um, <clears throat> To just the way that the normal life is, it just seems like uh, we're living in per perilous times where men will be more lovers of themselves than lovers of God. So we just want to deal with that today here. We want to thank Jim Stewart for lending his uh, great establishment to us to be able to come and break bread of life. The first scripture we'll be going over today will be Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. Also, if you want to be a blessing to this ministry, you can do so uh, through the lecture wherever you're located, through our cash app. Our cash app is dollar sign, GBWT Albion, all capital letters. Once again, our cash app is dollar sign, GBWT, Alvin, all capital letters. Sorry, this is for him. <laughs> In the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 14, the Bible says, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Uh, a lot of times we get in different situations, and uh, currently our church is in a situation, being transparent, where we're trying to grow. Uh, we have people coming in and coming out, and we're possibly even looking forward to either expanding our current walls or uh, moving to another location. It's very tough to achieve this when uh, mass America does not think church is important. Uh, the mentality today is people think they don't have to go to church, and that's simply false. I even preached a sermon not too long ago that the church is the gate to heaven. Uh, you can find that in your Bible. But uh, if you know anything about, and we're, we're thinking about getting the gate, because uh, we already got a gate at our house, but we're thinking about getting another one, because the dog is so attracted to me and my wife's anointing, they cannot stay off our property. But nevertheless, nine times out of 10, you go into in any residence or place with a gate, you have to go through the gate to get to that residence or that establishment. So we have to have that mind, same mindset when coming to a church. Is there churches, there's teaching false doctrine, using gimmicks and games and playing, and yes, there are, but it's on you to search out the right church that fits your needs and to see if that church, if that particular church is abiding by the Bible. And even one of the uh, people here, uh, one of the members here today was searching for a church that uh, the current church she was at was not fitting her needs. And it was not till one day she ran into a situation where she found a church that fit her needs. Let us go to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. We're dealing God can help you. 
And this is part two of our Bible study. And we're not in our church, amen, but uh, the church uh, is not the only place that you can hold a Bible study, <laughs> amen. amen. As uh, our members here break into muffins and, <laughs> and all type of stuff. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse six, the Bible says, be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. Who is them? Them is anybody who represents the devil. And sometimes, even as Christians, guess what? Sometimes we can represent the devil because the Bible says, for we perish for a lack of knowledge. We think we know everything. You know, like little kids that may get good grades there on honor roll. And you may say something to them and they say, I don't know what you're talking about, you old. I know everything. Well, simply, they don't have the wisdom, the knowledge or the experience that your age and your life experience share. So we have to be careful who we represent. And we all going to make mistakes, including me, right? When the pastor, the preacher, the teacher, the evangelist, whoever teaches, preaches Bible study or preaches Sunday sermon, the first person those scriptures should apply to is the pastor, is the preacher, is the teacher, is the evangelist, right? The first person that should display the scriptures is the pastor. The same thing goes into your household. If you are the leader of the household, you have to be the first one to say you're sorry, the first one to point out your mistakes, because when you're leading, it's not just, hey y'all, look at me. Put me on the fly, put my picture up. No, you have to lead and you have to be humble. God rewards those that are humble. And he mentioned that in the Old Testament, New Testament. But let's continue reading Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse six. Be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them for the Lord thy God, he it is that do go with thee and he will not fail thee nor forsake thee. But we have to follow the scriptures. It starts off by being strong, not from a physical standpoint, although we all can use some work out at the gym, the church say amen, and of good courage, that means don't be scared, right? Don't, it says don't fear, and fear not. You shouldn't be afraid of the devil. The worst thing the devil can do is kill you. And we go to paradise. Once you acknowledge that, and he has to get permission from God when he does anything to you, but when you understand his end game is death and that helps us, and you can receive that, then you be invincible, untouchable. And Bishop Combs was preaching this, not this particular, but he was teaching on this, preaching on this, and that's when he fell out in the pulpit. He says when the, the apostolic Christian or the saint accepts that the worst thing that can happen to you is death, which is actually a victory for you, the devil is, is, is harmless at that point to the Christian. Uh, so, but I know everybody doesn't want to get in that casket, but if the rapture is 100, 200 years away, we all gonna have to get in that casket. Unless we in, is in impeccable health. Amen. Let us go to Psalm, the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalm, we got two different verses we want to deal with Psalm. Psalm number 32 first, verse seven. And I'm, I'm, I like to touch the page to see the scriptures. Um, I do from time to time read from my phone the app. Uh, and even let it play uh, and work through my headphones, the audio. However you can get the word through you is good. But me personally, I like to, especially when I'm study teaching, I like to see the scriptures feel this. Uh, as they say, the scrolls, the holy scrolls. Amen. Psalm 
32, verse 7. The Bible reads, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Selah. It didn't say songs of Rick Ross. It didn't say songs of Nicki Minaj, who claimed she retired, which is very strange after she did a song with uh, Tasha Cobb. Now you want to retire and get married. Praise the Lord. She didn't say songs of uh, uh, Cardi B. Praise the Lord. Songs of deliverance. Selah. This is a, a psalm of David. And if you watch movies, me and my wife are movie buffs. Sometimes it takes up to 30 minutes for us to compromise or either one of us gives up or we're movie. We give up. The food didn't got cold. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. The food didn't got cold. I got to go warm it up. But we watch a lot of these movies where somebody was said to commit a crime, but they actually didn't do it. So they're running away and they're trying to find a safe place to hide. And a lot of times we do this with our sins. We mess up and now we're looking for a place to hide. David is telling God, you are my hiding place. For everything I've done wrong, for every sin I can commit, for every mistake, every flaw that I have committed, you can only re receive true deliverance, which it is an, is an act from God. God is the only one that can wipe away your sins. Praise the Lord. What, what was that uh, lady name? Lisa Ray, who always wearing white. Praise the Lord. I, I ain't gonna say who her ex-boyfriend is. Y'all should know that. He was on Preachers of LA. I'm gonna leave that alone. This is all documented. If it wasn't feasible, so you can see through the internet, I would not say it. Uh, you got this other guy, Yo Gotti. He likes to wear all white. Just because you wear all white doesn't mean you deliver. Amen. Y'all quiet in this coffee house on tonight. <laughs> True deliverance means when you submit yourself to God, when you confess your sins to God, right? Mm -hmm. And then it says, thou shalt preserve me from trouble. But what I want to say, but you will preserve me from the trouble I, I started, the trouble I did, <laughs> right? Praise the Lord. So thou shalt compass me about with songs and deliverance. And um, we don't do that yet. Maybe we'll do it in the future. Uh, but when I was in training for ministry, and I don't know if they did this at Christ Temple Apostolic Faith in Muskegon Heights. Um, when you open up Bible study, they used to have the ministers that were trained to open up Bible study. You used to have to sing songs, pray, prayer, take prayer requests, and sing songs for about 30 minutes until Bishop Harper came out, right? And the ministers used to rotate. And I was always be there. So he would be like, yeah, uh, Will. Yeah, really gonna open up. That's what Pastor Harper used to call me, one of my nicknames. But I, I didn't really know a lot of songs. So I had to get a little uh, book and write some stuff down the piece of paper I had that. Now I was seeing the same songs, but God will give you a song of deliverance. We was riding here uh, from work today and a couple of the songs that was playing, uh, think, God is my help. Forget who was singing that. Was that Hezekiah Walker? Yeah, Hezekiah Walker, that song touched me. And I was listening to another song. Uh, I forget who it was. But uh, sometimes songs would do that. And that's why we got to be careful how secular we go with the gospel music or Christian music. Now, there is a place for that. I'm not against gospel rap, Christian. It serves a purpose. 
But if that's the only thing you bumping, you should have graduated. If you've been saved for 45 years and you only get high when Lecrae and Bizzle come on. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Or Trip Lee. They can Jones sing a little bit. He the gospel version of Drake. But nevertheless, let's go to Psalm chapter 46. I mean, Psalm 46, excuse me, verse 1. The Bible reads, God is what? And what? Strength. Wouldn't that mean that God is, is your help? For our God is helping you? A very present help in trouble. So in the midst of your trouble, probably that you started, right? Because you didn't cuss the man out of KFC, now he didn't pull the gun out on you. All because he, you was upset because you didn't get no fresh uh, chicken dropped. So now guess what? You in what? It started with a T. You in trouble. <laughs> And you got to depend on who? Not Wendy Williams. Huh? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You got to depend on God. A lot of situations, I'm being facetious and comical, but a lot of situations that we find ourselves in, the only person that can help you, the only entity that can help you is God. We try to figure out ourselves, pull out our calculator, you know, thinking, oh, I'm going to do this. Look at the calendar. It's only four weeks in a month. If you lucky, five. And guess what? You need at least five, well, if you get paid like me, you need at least five Fridays. So if it's five Tuesdays, that's not help. <laughs> if your pay cycle like mine. So then we, we, we look at stuff, we look at our jewelry. Do we really need that this ring? Can we tell, sell these clothes to Salvation Army a good, you know? No, the only person that can help you in situations is God. And we, when we realize that from a spiritual standpoint, I'm telling you, once we, once we accomplish from a thought process, God really can help. Now, I'm not going to get too deep of a personal. We happy to have our brother and minister with us tonight. He told me some information concerning some family business. The very reason why that person may have been taken away on a vacation is to free him so he can come to where he needs to be. Amen. See, God works in mysterious ways. It is not just free fries with your Big Mac. Because huh? that's the only time Christians get happy when you pull, you out of town, right? You pulling up to drive through, you tired, you get something to eat, they close it, you pull up and they give you some extra chicken. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I knew you loved me, right? Now, that's not the only things that God can do. God is more than providing hookups at fast food restaurants. But let us go to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10. The Bible reads, in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10, the name of the Lord is a what? A strong tower, the righteous run into it, and it's safe. So I don't mean to bring this up because some people get dramatic and extra sensitive, but this is the opposite of the Twin Towers. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and it's safe. So... The foundation that Solomon is setting here in this particular scripture, just God himself, right? God is so strong. The righteous. Who is considered the righteous? It starts with a C. It's a group of people. And I'm not talking about the Crips and Bloods. Christians, thank you. The righteous run into it. So any Christian has a right to run to who? God. To God. Any Christian. It doesn't matter your color, white, red, blue, brown, green, orange. Because you know that guy in office, he, his color is not black or white or Mexican. He's orange. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
and it's saying you are safe. Now you know how you get in trouble and you call your friend, girl, I can't believe what happened. Let me tell you this. Mm. And next thing you know, everybody know at your job, mm. all your family members know, mm -hmm. they posting about you on Facebook, yeah. right? Being passive aggressive <laughs> on Twitter, Instagram, huh? Snapchat, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Solomon saying when you go to God for help, it's safe. And ain't nobody gonna know unless you tell them. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. And I know you saying, what about the New Testament? You can't show me New Testament scriptures that God can help me. You keep showing me these Old Testament. He only helped Old Testament Christians. Well, I'm glad you said that. We'll get there momentarily. We also want to thank Jim Stewart for opening up this establishment for us for giving us hospitality to be able here to have our Bible study here. We're very thankful at Sterling Books and Brew. It's located in Albion, Michigan, uh, downtown, not too far from the college. So if you are ever in the area, make sure you stop by and be a blessing. Isaiah chapter 54. Verse 17, the Bible reads, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. There's a lot of people. Now, we know the first part, no weapon. Mm -hmm. Most preachers, most teachers, evangelists, ministers they use this first part of the scripture but a lot of people and this is dealing with primarily non-christians christians atheists judging us on how we move just because i i don't want to conduce myself to the sinful acts of the ways of the land there's nothing wrong with it. I married a woman. That was the choice that I made. You shouldn't be judging me based upon that. You shouldn't, oh, he go to church too much. What's wrong with him? You judging me, and according to the scriptures, they shall be condemned. Right? The, the world the non-believers, the sinners, those that worship and run with the devil does not have the privilege to judge us. Actually, if you read your Bible, and I know many Christians are scared to go to Revelations, they get, ooh, ooh, I'm scared to read Revelations. It's part of the Bible. You will see that we will have the opportunity to judge them. They shouldn't be judged, and they will be condemned. Why are you always reading his Bible on break? Why are you always playing gospel? Why are you always looking at sermons? He always looking at himself more. He is conceived. They don't have the right, according to this. God is the ultimate help source. There's many different things that we look to help us, whether it be pain medicine, doctor, therapist, counselor, social worker if you have one, uh, policeman, amen. But God is the ultimate source of help, especially for Christians and believers. Let us go into the New Testament for those that are worried there's no scriptures that we be going over. And we also did a part one, it's a little bit back I think we came here in November of 2019. That was part one. We did God Can Help You, part one. It's part two. So you're always free to go back and look at that. Uh, we thank our social uh, media, uh, the media director, helping us get this information out to you. The Book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31. 
the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 31 what shall we then say to these things if God be for us who can be against us if God be for us right not the Republican and Democratic Party not the Libertarian Party not the Tea Party the Green Party what about the Holy Ghost Party right and then I know when I was uh, doing my thing in the streets, you would go to the club, then you would go to this place where they call it the after party or the after hour spot. Well, I got a message for you. If you ain't saved, you ain't gonna like the after party after this life. <laughs> you think your apartment AC don't work now? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> So while we have a chance, and this is Paul writing to the Roman church, while we have a chance, and he's questioning, what shall we then say to these things? So he's letting you know, go to the main source. The encyclopedia is not the main source. Google is not the main source. If you are a Christian, and many of us with the high school minimum, most of us here went to uh, higher education, whether it was technological school, college, or what have you. Our main text was our main source is the Bible. And every word in here is inspired by God. You got, and you gotta be careful now, which I, there's so much stuff to te teach on, but NIV, English translation, if took out something like over a hundred some thousand verses, change stuff in there to please the flesh. Oh, some of the stuff is hard, I know. I'm trying to get to heaven. Now I'll be 40 next year, I know you, you're shocked by the way my hair has grew in place and my, and my cocoa butter uh, skin. You say, Pastor, you gonna be 40 next year? Yeah, I am. But the Holy Ghost has prevailed, <laughs> right? I'm going to give up red meat on my daily diet. So you said, Pastor, you're not going to eat ribs at the family year? I didn't say that. You're not going to order steak at Texas Royal House or Ruth Chris? I didn't say that. I said my daily diet to preserve. Amen? And this is hard decisions we got to make, but the bottom line is, I got to ask, how long do I want to be here? It's a tough decision, but God is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. We have to be smart about everything we do. Amen? Yeah. So if you're a type 2 diabetic and you're trying to hold your sugar, should you be drinking 7, 8, 9, 10 Mountain Dews? No. They masses of Madonna. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Only a few more scriptures and we're going to prepare to close out as Sister Keisha consoles her mother in her, in her past in her past mistakes and issues and problems that we pray that God has delivered her. Delivered the taste of Mountain Dew from her tongue. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 Paul wrote this letter to the church of Ephesus and um, uh, dealing with the Ephesians which was the early church uh, right after the day of Pentecost let's see what it says in chapter 6 verse 11 put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil see a lot of times as Christians we don't put on the whole armor, right? Mm -hmm. We want to be saved on Sunday, but we don't want to be saved on Monday, right? We want to read our Bible when it is scripture reading at church, but that's it. And that's why you say, Pastor always picking these long verses readings, these long, because I'm trying to make sure you can get a chapter in with y'all every week. So when I go in front of God, I can say, well, I made them Negroes read a chapter at least once a week. 
And you say, well, I thought that you had Caucasian members. Well, he said he was 1,000% of African-American descent. <laughs> Let the church say amen. <laughs> so we have to not only put on the whole armor of God, keep it on. That ye may be able to stand against the wise devil. What is the wise devil? The tricks, the temptations, the trials, the tribulations, the issues, the problems. Because he going to throw it in front of you. Just after I just I just buried a family member, I get a phone call from my father, and now somebody else is sick, saying that his heart is only operating at 60%. He woke up and his whole body was swollen. Amen? I can't get a, a minute to breathe. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So much to pray for, so much to... Uh, expound on. But I can't do none of this without the help from who? God. And we're seeing here that is very unique. Today, the scriptures that was dealing with, not only is God helping us, God is our what? It starts with a P. P-R. P-R-O. P P-R-O-T. Protection. God is also our protection. Last scripture and we're going to close out. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6. And it's very, it's very strange that Paul was never married or is never recorded in the scriptures. But he, he teaches on marriage in the New Testament more than anybody. That's very strange. But God don't make mistakes, we do. Amen? Amen? And don't forget, God made a donkey talk. <laughs> but I don't need no to talk for me. Let the church say amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my what? Helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Because God is above man. People worship these political parties. People worship these politicians. At the end of the day, they either go raise your taxes or lower your taxes. At the end of the day, we still got to go someplace after here. And I'm not talking about when we leave Jim's uh, coffee shop and bookstore. I'm talking about after this life. So it doesn't, yes, take heed to your vote. This is election year. Use your vote. People die for the right to vote, right? Not just, not just African Americans. Remember, women didn't get the right to vote to 1920. So African American slaves had the right to vote before them. That's why they ain't black. Amen? Amen. But I'm saying, is that that doesn't determine salvation. One of the issues that ain't, ain't, ain't none of y'all can, I know, I know one or two people personally that can't do this. But ain't, ain't none of y'all can text and call Trump right now. But all y'all can get on y'all knees and pray and get, get through to God. Amen. Amen. So hopefully these scriptures have been a blessing to you that this is part two of God can help you. Uh, we want to, for you to be encouraged and know that you can always depend on God. And uh, once again, we want to thank Jim Stewart for allowing us to have Bible study here uh, at Sterling Books and Brew. Uh, so hopefully this has been a blessing to you. We love you and God bless you in Jesus' name.